I added the material or the chapter on structuration by Giddens largely because Giddens may well be the most important sociologist of uh, the prior generation. The chapter is really tough sledding. Uh, this is Professor Giddens, former Oxford professor, former director of the London School of Economics, a life peer and member of the House of Lords in Great Britain, a former advisor to Prime Minister Tony Blair, and perhaps the most important living sociologist. Probably you have by now grasped that we could spend the entire semester, actually you could probably spend your entire career in sociology uh, trying to understand what Giddens means by structuration. Giddens adds space, time, motion, and consciousness to our toolkit for understanding, describing, and explaining the perpetual creation of social structure. Enduring patterns of interaction, social structures and institutions are replicated in daily interactions by consciousness, by conscious and knowable actors who self-monitor their own activities and the activities of others. That's what Giddens means when he refers to this dual or dual consciousness or dual structure, the internal consciousness of the actor and the external reality of social rules. Struct structuration is uh, thusly uh, a theory about rational purposive behavior, rational purposive behavior that results in the reaffirmation typically of social structures. The behavior reconstructs existing structures on a daily basis. Giddens in the chapter sidesteps the reductive conceptions of institutions that result in showing a foundation of institutions in some form of the unconscious uh, or by, by pointing out how these really underestimate the potential for contributions of social forces that operate at a totally and completely different level. He also sidesteps these reductive theories of consciousness, which wanting to show how much of social life is governed by dark currents outside the scope of actors' awareness underestimate the potential level of self-control that agents can sustain over long periods or short periods of time. The vast knowledge that's required for social actors to, in quotes, carry on, to use the, the, the now really popular British phrase, can be tacit or explicit, but either way it is part of the competence they bring to situations. And there's competence alongside the co-monitoring of activity, that is the co-monitoring that occurs alongside uh, the co-monitoring of their peers or other people with whom they are engaged in uh, interaction is a key piece of the power that is required of all agents and, of course, all humans. To be human is to be an agent at some way and some level. Unlike the ethnomethodologist, Giddens does not re refocus to telescope these taken-for-granted assumptions in, in uh, socio-space uh, between the practical and the discursive. Remember these ethnomethodological experiences in which uh, the routine order of things is disrupted. Rather, Giddens stays right on target. What is agency? And by this he means implicitly, what are the time-space enabling constraints through which individual human actors can exercise power by recreating the existing structures, or by transforming structures. This is, to a certain extent, right at the heart of the sociology of culture, and especially cognitive sociology, because many of the social structures and much of the power that is uh, derived, or much of the power that accrues to individuals within a social structure, and especially in a democratic society, is power that results from control over knowledge. The most important power of all. 
in other societies and other times and other places, and even in our contemporary world. Yes, we do result to power by force, but typically in a democratic society, power has to do with the acquisition, uh, use of, application of, transformation of knowledge, and the use of knowledge to achieve a position uh, both in a, a, an existing social structure or to transform an existing social structure. Think, for example, of the practice of medicine. In, within the operating room, the physician and the lead physician has power in that situation. They have power because they have, in principle, are supposed to have the highest level of expertise and knowledge needed to perform a highly complex, highly skilled act in which they are in the co-presence of others who are likewise monitoring their behavior. So again, this is a very, very complex uh, topic, very, very complex subject, very, very complex idea, but one that I think is really at the heart of understanding not just the way that ideas bubble up from uh, either at the individual level bubble up from experience or from a, the, a social aggregate bubble up from uh, a larger social uh, constitution, but also the way in which experts uh, push knowledge down. And of course, people in power, people with an enormous amount of control, people with an enormous amount of knowledge do have more agency.